everybody, this is Hal coming from Daigle Auto Harps here in SeaTac and uh, it's freezing in the back. <laughs> Not literally freezing, but it's really cold back there. And uh, so I thought I'd come out here in the nice heated shop and make a video uh, for a little while. And uh, I'm going to start, I think this might become a series um, of auto harps that let's call it so you inherited an auto harp or uh, you found an auto harp and maybe you don't know anything about it um, or I don't know what to call it you have, you have acquired an auto harp maybe you bought one online and uh, you're not sure what you got and you're not sure you're not sure if what you got is viable um, because you're new to all this and so I'm going to be showing you um, over a series of videos um, and then there might be a lot of them because there's a lot of variants in this all the different things to look for on various auto harps that are old and um, uh, perhaps in disrepair perhaps not what's good what's not how do I know um, what do I look for things like that and um, um, we get people coming in. We had a guy come in right in this front door um, about two weeks ago. He had found an auto harp by the side of the road. Gee, I guess I'll take you down to that auto harp shop. And uh, he comes in, and I look over his auto harp, and it uh, uh, turns out it was pretty fixable. And um, we continued to, we worked on it and got it fixed up, and he went out a happy camper. Um, but a lot of people pay good money for an auto harp that they get online and they get a clunker and the person selling it didn't know and they didn't know either when they got it until they um something went wrong with it and so i wanted to show you some of the things that go wrong and today i've got this guy right here and uh, this is a uh, it's actually a body of an auto harp um, originally had a cord bar cover on it and the um, the damage was hidden so uh, I'm going to adjust my camera here so that you can you can look at it while it's on my table okay so this auto harp had a cord bar set on it and uh, I've got a cover right here that I'm just gonna put in place so that you can see you know the the average auto harp you know all of this area is covered and so you don't know where's the sound hole no, that's not damage. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the sound hole went away. Now, for a certain amount of time, some auto harps were built without sound holes. They still sound okay, too. And this auto harp would sound excellent. Um, this is a B model auto harp, if you don't know. Uh, the way you can tell is it's got this, this um, anchor down here that's made out of aluminum with slots in it. That's one giveaway. The other thing is that the, the strings run over these little posts right here that are called uh, bridge pins. I'm talking about these right here. Other auto harps have a, um, well, here's one right here. This one has a bridge instead. If you look, it's got this, this um, um, stick of wood right here with individual pins on it. This is an A model harp. This is a B model harp. So while we've got that out of the way, um, I have this area under here that is hidden. I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to show you what's wrong with it. You Even now you can't really see it to look at it, um, but uh, the top is completely sunken under the cord bars. So the seller couldn't see it. It didn't show up in the photographs. You can see the line. You see the line there. Actually, it's darker on this side. Um, I'm going to put it in right next to the strings. And you'll see that, that that line that I drew with the pen is basically right about the level of the strings. I'm touching the, the soundboard. Now watch. Whoa. You see that? How it's sunk down? And you can see 
how under the keyboard label there, it's totally bowed down. So, you ask, is it fixable? Is this one salvageable? Um, well, what we got to do is we got to look under the anchor. I'm going to show you um, the clue first to look for. Um, the problem here is the anchor is coming out. And this is what we find is um, going on with um, many, many of these um, Oscar Schmidt auto harps that are, you know, around 50 years old or so. Um, they are, the anchor is uh, working its way out because of the constant pull. I've done videos on this before and I've even showed how to repair it. Um, this anchor is starting to pull out like this because the strings have been pulling against it. It's tuned, it's actually overtuned. Um, and it's been that way for 50 years, and it's been sitting in uh, a damp cellar or a damp attic, who knows, and it's been pulling, 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 pulling. Oscar Schmidt didn't know that this was gonna happen, um, um, but sure enough, here as it's gotten older, and these are the good harps, we wanna rescue them if we can. I'm gonna show you what's going on, and we're gonna have a little fun and uh, stick around because I'm going to chop the strings right off with these snips right in front of your very eyes. And this is hard, to, as you can see, this is hard to get at and it's hard to see and a seller's got, not going to know to do this and you're not going to know to do it when you get the harp unless you've watched this video. Now, some harps that have this defect are salvageable. My guess is that this one is too far gone, which makes it just so much firewood. Which is too bad, but let's take a look. We're taking this cover off, which is just a cosmetic thing. And sometimes when you have a harp of this vintage right here, there's a number printed and two of the digits are the year that it was made. This does not have a number. Um, I don't know what was up with that variance, how some of them have it and some of them don't. But um, this is an American made harp. I know that just because of the trapezoidal shape around the logo here. American made harps are really nice when they're nice, they sound good. Um, I want to show you now the giveaway um, or the thing that will tell you. Can you see this little space right under here? If that space, and there's a space like that on most of these these days, if that space is enough where you can take a pin or a little wire and slide it in under there, then it's already happening. And that you can see that's pulling up and out. It's coming up out this way. And this is at an angle. It's tipping out. And what that's doing is it's pushing against this load bearing edge with about 1500 pounds of pressure against, and it's causing the top to sink in. Sometimes it'll cause it to belly out. Um, but um, we still don't know how bad this has gotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my safety goggles. Drum roll please. You ready? Here we go. I'm just going to chop these right Wang, wang, wang. We don't do this in the shop. I'm doing it just for the fun of it. Just for this one video. Wang, 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 wang. I'm doing it through these old strings because if it is salvageable, salvageable, um, if it happens to be salvageable, 
then uh, we're going to have to put new strings on it. And if it's not, then it's going in the garbage. So it doesn't really matter. But now this will come out. And we can lift this out and look at the damage to the load-bearing edge. So I'm just going to set this aside. Are you feeling faint from that? Are you, are you like, do you need, do you need a minute? Because I can wait. All right, we're going to look at the load bearing edge here and see what kind of damage we're dealing with. First of all, you can see that it has actually cracked up here. And the surface has pushed in. And it looks like there may actually be some damage under here, too. Shall we see if we can take that off? I don't know if I have a screwdriver that fine. This one's turning right out. It's all corroded. So this harp has been probably in some pretty intense moisture. Now you can really see the dip in that top, the light changing off the surface of this, the reflections going into the camera are making the color change. But you can see if I use the straight edge of this right there, You can see how much space is collapsed there. And this is, you could fix this up. Um, what we do, and if you haven't seen that video, is that we put screws through the anchor going into this wall to secure it and keep it from pulling up and out. And that will stop this from happening further. So yeah, I think this actually might be uh, fixable. It, it won't be ideal, um, but it won't go any further and it hasn't totally destroyed this edge. I have another one. This is actually the one that I showed in the previous video about this problem. And I actually keep it back here um, because so many people come in with their harps um, just to have them fixed up. And I have to show them this harp so I can show them why it needs to be done. This is one that we decided was not fixable. And it's a newer harp. The body um, is you know, clearly in really good condition, but this was so far pulled out that um, if you look at the load bearing edge on this, you can see how it's folded up right here. And if I show you how crushed the edge, see I wrote dead harp, bad anchor, dead harp, demo harp, sorry. Bad anchor demo harp. Um, the load bearing edge is rising up out of the route and all along there it's split 
and the corner is crushed in. This harp's too far gone. And uh, it's really interesting because if you look, I don't know if you can see this, but the anchor has pulled so much up and against the thing that it's curved. You can, it's visibly curved and it's supposed to be straight. This one, when you look at it, is still pretty straight. But this one is not. And so it just warped out from all the string pressure on it. And this will happen to any B model. And we're seeing it now in the vintage ones in about half of them. And suggesting that if it's not happening, that it might well be happening soon um, because it's coming up more and more. And because these vintage auto harps are so good, the boxes sound so good, we want to preserve them because the new boxes are not going to sound that good because they don't sound that good now and they never will. And um, they're made out of um, lesser materials quality wise and they're gonna they're not worth saving but these old ones that haven't gone bad um, fix them before it happens uh, it will continue to bring um, you and whoever has it after you uh, and whoever has it after them joy in the future um, so, uh, I'm Hal Weeks. Uh, I've made a real mess here today, um, but it was fun. It's fun to chop off the strings like that, and it's fast. Um, now i got to deal with the mess I've made. <laughs> and so I'm going to stand here and do that for the probably the remainder of my afternoon. And <laughs> I'm going to turn you back. I've showed you this problem. I'll show you another problem with another harp on another day. Will it be as meatball surgery as this one was? Well, I don't know, probably not. Um, but um, we've got a lot of auto harps here. A lot of them are older and they have old harp problems. And so I can share those with you one at a time so that you can see what to look for and uh, what to avoid and what the problems are when you buy a nicer, older, used harp, uh, what you might find under the hood. So I'm Hal Weeks for Stocking the Wild Auto Harp. If you have found this the least bit entertaining or educational, um, because I'm here to inform and educate, uh, if you found this educational and you'd like to give a little something back, you can go over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash halweeks, and kick in a few bucks a month to keep me keeping going. Uh, I teach auto harp from right over there and uh, uh, meet people online on Zoom and uh, work with them on their playing skills, and I can certainly help you with that too. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for always watching this series. I'm Hal Weeks, and I'll see you next time on Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. Bye.